Welcome to Math Mini Lesson 6th Graders. My name is Sarah and I am your personal math coach ready to go lesson by lesson through 6th grade and make sure that you can understand math to its fullest potential. Our first unit is going to be on number sets and particularly today we're going to work on adding and subtracting with decimals and we're going to learn a new acronym called SOLVE which is how you'll see me model through many of the word problems that we do in our teacher models. So with that said, we're going to jump right into today's lesson. So before we go into our model for our first lesson, there's a word I really want to just go over with everyone, and that is the word algorithm, which is just a process of doing a calculation. And a lot of times, kids are taught that these are rules, that there's one way of doing something, um, but we're going to talk and make sure we explore different algorithms throughout throughout sixth grade math together. And another word you're gonna see us use a lot is the word solve, which isn't just a vocab word, it really is an acronym for the way we're gonna show our process for different problems to make sure we're slowing down our thinking and making sure it's clear and visible on the page. So before we jump in, I just wanna very briefly, quickly review just evaluating adding and subtracting with decimals. And what you're gonna see us do right here, you're gonna see me stack them up and line them up. So I'm vertically just working through the problem, making sure that I'm adding and subtracting with attention to precision. That is gonna be important, how we add and taking the time to be really focused and careful about how we're doing our work. And you're also gonna see me do a trade first for subtraction, which is a different type of strategy. It looks just like regular subtraction, but I want you to pay attention to my process. So we're gonna jump in and you're gonna watch how I jump into these problems and use these three steps. Let's start with the addition problem. And you're gonna see, just like I said, I'm just gonna stack them. And while I stack them, the thing I want you to really notice is how I'm making sure that my decimals are lined up right on top of each other, all the way onto my sum. It should be lined up in a nice straight row. Just make that a little bit thicker. Second thing, notice that I'm going to use a placeholder uh, just because it makes it easier when I'm adding. And now I can add with precision, just taking my time, just making sure I'm being really careful about how I'm adding up my numbers, making sure I'm, I'm regrouping when necessary to do my work. So that's the first part just for our addition. Just make sure you're stacking everything up, you're adding any zeros as placeholders, and you're just being really careful. Now, for our subtraction problem, we're gonna start the same way. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room, some writing. And I want you to watch how it is I think through this problem is we're going to use something called trade first. Let me also put in these zeros as placeholders. They don't change value. We know that. So they stay right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start instead of subtracting here on the right, I want to start here on the left and I'm going to just ask myself one question. Do I have enough? That's the main question that I keep on asking. Do I have E? enough and if the answer is yes i have enough to subtract i i move on to the next number if the answer is no then i'm going to do some regrouping so watch uh do i have enough here yes i can do five minus three yes i can do two minus two but no i cannot do four minus eight so we're going to regroup a 14 and notice because i had to regroup with the one i don't have enough anymore so I'm going to regroup again. So now I have enough 11. I can 11 minus 2, 14 minus 8. 1 minus 0, yes, I have enough. Uh, 0 minus 6, no, I do not have enough. So let's regroup here. And then and lastly, 0 minus 5, no, I do not have enough. So I'm going to regroup again. Now that I've done all that, I've done all my trading first, look how quick and fast my subtraction is going to be. 10 minus 5, 9 minus 6, 0 minus 0, 14 minus 8, 11 minus 2, and 4 minus 3. And finished. 
The other thing that's really cool about this is that then I can just like look at these two numbers and think uh, 5 plus 5 is 10, check. 6 plus 3 is 9. Look how fast it is for me to check my work. 0 plus 0, 0. 8 plus 6, 14. 9 plus 2 is 11. And 3 plus 1 makes 4. So it makes it really easy for me to check. And it was much easier for me to just subtract without having to do any of my regrouping. So that was just a quick background. And we're going to get into our sixth grade teacher models. I'm going to use the acronym SOLVE to go through this. And the first three letters, S-O-L, are for stating the problem, organizing the facts, and lining up my plan with words. So take a moment to just look at our problem for today as I read aloud. Carlos has $20.56 to buy school lunches this week, and on Monday, he bought water for $1.76 and a cookie for $0.79. Cents. How much did Carlos spend? How much money does he have for the rest of the week? So first, I'm going to just state the problem. What are they asking me? Well, they're asking me how much did he spend on Monday. That's the first thing they're asking. And they're asking how much money does he have left? Okay, so that's all it means for state the problem. Usually it's right there, but I'm saying it in my own words to show that I understand instead of just repeating the same thing. Okay, so there's something about being able to show you understand. When you can say it in your own words, it shows you get it. Here are the facts in the problem. I know he starts with 2056. And we know how much he spends. He spends $1.76 and he spends 76 cents. Uh, so those, those are the facts in the problem that, um, that I've annotated out. And so what is my plan going to be? Again, I want to figure out how much he spent on Monday. So the first thing I'm going to do is just add up what he spent. And then I'm going to subtract that from $20.56. So that is my plan for going through this problem. So let's see it in action. All right. So the first part of my plan was to add a dollar seventy six and seventy nine cents. That's the first thing I'm going to do. So I'm going to put a parentheses around it because I want this plan to be one expression. So rather than look at it as two steps, the way you would normally do in elementary school, watch how I write it out so everything is in one expression. Uh, so I'm going to add these two first, and then I'm going to subtract this number from the twenty fifty six. So even though it's written this way, because this is in parentheses, I'm going to do this part first. And then I'm, once I find out this number, I'm going to subtract it from this number. So let's do the first part. I'm going to stack up 176 and 79 cents. Just making sure everything is stacked. And now I can add. And I know that he spent $2.55. So I like to really show all my thinking. So I'm going to show this in my work. So we can see that this has turned, I can see all of this goes down into like this number. So I'm simplifying my expression. It's going to get more and more simple. As a matter of fact, you're going to see when it gets to the answer, it's down to, to just one term. So now I just have one thing to do. I have to do 2056 minus 255. Again, we know that I like to use trade first, so I'm checking. I can do 2 minus 0, but I cannot do 0 minus 2. I can do 5 minus 5, and I can do 6 minus 5. So I can just subtract. And he has $18. and one cent left. So there you go. So let me make sure I also answer it in a full sentence. We know that Carlos spent 255 on Monday. He has 1801 left for the week done so i'm going to stop there uh normally i would go back and just double check my work but we're going to hit pause so you can just jot this down into your work and we can go into some more practice problems so but there you go now we've just reviewed adding and subtracting with desmos using solve